go to Patrick. Patrick Brown with uh, 24-7 Sports. Josh, you talked a lot about your uh, offensive philosophy. How, how would you kind of describe your background and how uh, your, your schemes and, and the way you've played has, has changed over your years at Oklahoma, Utah State, Missouri, and, and UCF? Yeah, at the end of the day, you become a culmination of everything that you, you, you've done. But you really do change year to year based on what your personnel is. That, that's who your quarterback is, what your skill set is there. Who are the skill players around him? Uh, whether you're going to play in you know three wide receiver sets, four wide receiver sets, or you're going to be in two tight end sets. Uh, we've played in all of those things. Um, it comes down to always looking at, and this is, I think it's critical on the offense side of the ball, but it's the same thing I'm going to talk to our, our defense staff and our special team staff about, is don't look at what kids can't do. Look at what they can do at a high level and put them in a position of success. That is a coach's job. That, you know, understand who your players are and put them in a position of success. And so uh, we'll base what we do offensively as far as our personnel groupings and some of the subtle schemes based on what our personnel is. But it's grown and changed throughout the years for sure. Blake in the back. Hey, Josh. Blake Topmeyer, Knoxville News Sentinel. Kind of a, a follow-up to that question. Um, your, your scheme is, is obviously – fair bit different than, than what Tennessee was doing. How do you go about establishing that, that new system in, in one off season? And then uh, specifically with the staff, is, is Kevin Steele someone you would, would like to keep on, on the staff going forward? I'm going to have a conversation with everybody that's, uh, that's on staff. Uh, I'll touch on that question first. Um, uh, I think that's important. Um, the uh, the first question was uh, the temple portion yeah, of how you install it. Installing your scheme in one off season. Yeah, you, you, well, we've done it successfully multiple times, different places that I've been. Uh, your coaches uh, have to get caught up to speed on what you're doing if they haven't been inside of the system. You got to coach your coaches, and then your coaches got to put in time with your players. And and um, there's only one way to get to where you need to be, and that's time, effort, and energy, right? And our players. Um, have to be willing to go above and beyond to, to get where we need to be. Uh, we will be able to get there, no question in my mind, um, you know, as we get into spring ball uh, through summer workouts. And by the time we get to, to the end of training camp, we'll be in a good position by the time we hit the ground in the fall. We'll take some virtual questions. We'll start with Dennis Dodd, CBS. Hey, Josh, congratulations. Um, I, I wonder, big picture, if you could just, uh, in retrospect, what did the firing at, at Oklahoma in 14 mean to you and mean to your career? Uh, give me a chance in, in some ways, uh, Dennis, just to kind of restart and relook at what I wanted to do on the offensive side of the football. And, and uh, as a coordinator, uh, you're always going to try to uh, carry out your head coach's vision. Um, there were a lot of things we did successfully. I think we were top 10 in the country in, in, uh, in offense that year playing with a freshman quarterback um, and that maybe started, you know, last two-thirds of the season, uh, ran into a buzzsaw in a bowl game against a really good uh, Clemson football team. Um, but uh, it gave me an opportunity just to, to reshift my focus on what I wanted to, to be as far as an identity on the offensive side of football. We'll go to Mike Wilson virtually. Yeah, hey Josh, Mike Wilson from Knoxville News Sentinel. I'm just curious what the, the challenges are of being hired in late January, uh, opposed to, to coming in, you know, typically in November as a new hire. So what challenges do you expect with signing day coming up fast and spring football coming up fast? Yeah, and the toughest part is, is getting a, a hold on what your roster actually is, what are the needs, and um, you know, signing day being as close as it is, uh, are those vacancies that you want to fill? Uh, do you want to hold them? It's a different landscape now, too, because of, of uh, the transfer portal, and we talked about that uh, as far as our own roster here. Uh, but junior college football uh, is taking place this spring as well. Um, so as you get through spring ball, um, you potentially are going to need to fill some spots on your roster uh, at that time as well. It's a little bit different cycle, unique, than what it has been in the past. One more question virtually. Mike Bianchi. Yeah, Coach, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. I'm wondering, uh, you talked about a football team as a family. Well, the family down here lost their, the head of the family. How did your players handle it? Were you able to talk to them? And also, um, is being able to compete for championships at the highest level, did that have anything to do with your decision? Uh, got an opportunity to, to talk with our football team uh, in Orlando uh, this morning. 
Uh, I'll, it was important to me uh, that we did that. Uh, at the same time, I uh, created a, a video message for um, our new football team here in, in, uh, in Knoxville. And uh, they were able to simultaneously, as I was having that conversation with them, uh, receive a message from me. Um, what I saw as the, the future of, of, uh, of Tennessee football and things that are important inside of our, our culture. Um, I do. I love the players in Orlando. Uh, it was a hard morning. I said that about um, my kids when they found out that, that their home was going to change. They're excited now, too. Um, but that was a tough conversation because you, you care deeply about uh, the people that you're, you're pouring a lot of time and energy uh, into, as we did. Um, I think um, for my family and I coming here, it's because we believe um, in this university. We believe in this football program. We believe in the leadership. Uh, that we have here in place uh, and it's clearly aligned and uh, there's a direct uh, correlation to uh, that alignment and the ability for me to go do my job at the at the highest level. We'll come back to the room here to the middle and Brent. Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com. Two questions. What did you learn in the two years at Missouri about the SEC and kind of how you have to play football here? Is it any different than at UCF or anywhere else? And two, how do you feel like you've grown the last three years the most as a head coach, CEO, leader of a program beyond just being a play caller? Yeah, I, I think your communication skills and, and how clear your communication has to be, not with your football coaches, but with every support uh, staff group that, that interacts with your players to give them the best opportunity to, to be successful. I, I think that's um, the number one thing as I've looked back on the last three years that uh, – um, I'm in a better place today than I was b was before. Um, and uh, um, your initial question was Just what you the SEC. In your first the, the SEC about maybe playing yeah. in this Well, league. I think the, the line of scrimmage in, in this league is, is different than, than it is in, in other leagues, right? So you got to do a great job of, of recruiting, developing those guys. Uh, that size strength matters up front. Uh, you got to do a great job. You're going to face uh, elite pass rushers in this league, and so you got to do a great job of, of protecting uh, your quarterback as well, just from an offensive uh, standpoint. But I think the line of scrimmage is, is the biggest difference. The coach is far right, Trey. Uh, Trey Wallace, Fox Sports, Knoxville. Your relationship with Danny and, and the years that you've spent with him, did, was there ever a, a thought process in, in your mind that when he took the job here, maybe somehow you ended up in Knoxville? And, and what have you learned from Danny and y'all's relationship over the last three years that you think you can bring here to Knoxville to better this institution? Yeah, uh, when uh, Danny got the job, I uh, was disappointed that uh, he wasn't going to be there anymore. Uh, we had a conversation after it went public and uh, wished him well, and, and that was really the end of that, that conversation. Didn't think about um, this opportunity uh, in that way. I, I think as a football coach, you're, you're typically just living in the environment that you're in. You're so encapsulated in that. Uh, that, that's your sole focus, that uh, you don't think outside uh, of those things. I think for Danny and I, there, there's, for me, and I don't want to speak for him, but there's, there's great comfort in, in coming here and knowing exactly what you're getting out of the leader that you deal with the, the most. There's a clear vision of what he wants for the student athlete experience, which is extremely important, and a clear vision of what he wants as an athletic department as a whole. And uh, there's a lot of entities inside of our, our, our program here that are doing extremely well. You look at our basketball programs. Uh, it's my job to make sure that we're getting this uh, built to, to, the, to the level where we can go chase championships every year, too. Up front here to Rick. Trey kind of asked the same question I was going to ask. But first of all, welcome to town and to you, you and your family. And uh, uh, Rick Russo, by the way, WVLT News. But yeah, is there a sense of comfortability for you knowing that Danny is here and, and the, the, the big vision for you for UT football, sustained success? Talk about that and how important that is to you. Yeah, we had a conversation. Um, what are we looking for and how are we trying to, to, to build this? And um, it's a, it's a long-term vision, right? I believe that we can have uh, immediate success as well. We got really good players inside of that locker room. You know, I've I've watched a little bit of tape, uh, or I've seen them in recruiting. There's good players in there. Uh, it's our job as a coaching staff to get them ready to, to go play their absolute best and go compete every Saturday. Um, you know, so uh, but at the same time, there's a long-term vision of, of what we're trying to build here uh, for sustainable success and uh, uh, a clear vision of, of how we're trying to do that.
one more question in the room here, and then we'll go back virtually. David. Hey, Coach David Shealy with WBIR. Danny talked about how you're a great developer of young quarterbacks. What qualities does a quarterback need to have to be successful in your system? We've had different guys play uh, with a different skill set. Um, <clears throat> we've had, uh, I mean, just going back through my tenure, we, we've had guys that were pure pocket guys um, to uh, guys that uh, have been able to use their feet uh, in the run game, in designed runs, uh, or reading pressures off the edge. Um, use their feet as, as a weapon in, in scrambles. Uh, and we've had guys that have fallen somewhere in between. Uh, we've had you know, 6'3 guys and we've had 5'10 you know, uh, the last couple of years at, at UCF. Um, it's about the makeup and the guy inside as much as it is anything. You know, how, how competitive are they? Are they? You know, I think that's extremely important. It drives them every day. Um, what is their ability to react and respond? Uh, to adverse situations? Uh, can they wipe the slate clean from the previous play? Uh, can they handle all the noise and all the pressure uh, that's going on around them, not just on game day, but in everyday life as they walk through campus? Uh, can they meet in, uh, uh, the expectations and the work habits that you have to have? So uh, all of those little things add up to, to a guy playing at a, a championship level at that, that position. And if you're going to chase championships, you better have a championship quarterback.